No matter what your Aunt Ida thinks, queer people weren't invented in the 1980s. They've literally always existed. Hello, and welcome to an episode of Historical Icons Who Weren't Actually Straight. Today, we'll be talking about the amazing Chevalier Dion, a French spy, diplomat, soldier, and person of trans experience. Up first, some fast facts. In 1728, the Chevalier Dion was born Charles Genevieve Louis Auguste Andre Timothy Dion de Beaumont, and somehow having the longest name in human history isn't what she's famous for. She was a whiz kid at school, and by the time Dion turned 35, she obtained a law degree, published books, became a renowned fencer, got knighted, and probably made everyone around her feel like a huge underachiever. Dion had a public career as a diplomat to Russia and England, but secretly, she also worked for the most covert spy service in France, known as Le Secret du Roi, or the King's Secret. During this time, she successfully infiltrated the court of Empress Elizabeth of Russia by presenting as a woman, though she wouldn't transition until many years later. At 32, as a French ambassador and as a military captain, Dion fought in the Seven Years' War and was present to mediate the Peace of Paris Treaty that ended it. She helped end a dang war! Granted, the war did not go well for France, but for her contributions, Dion was awarded one of France's highest honors by King Louis XV, the Order of Saint-Louis. This is when she officially took the title of Chevalier, which means knight. So she and the king seemed like they were on good terms, but a year later in 1764, the king booted her out of her diplomatic liaison job. To get back at him and throw some shade, she published a satirical and popular book of state secrets that she had collected as a spy. Yeah, we get it, Dion. You're good at everything! And she was also very clever. She held back some of the most damaging secrets of the crown, so even though the book caused her to be exiled from France, she was able to blackmail the king, who kept her on his payroll until his death in 1774. Pretty smart. But like many good stories, this one has a tragic ending. Dion was jailed for debt in 1804. Despite an advance from a publisher to write a final memoir, the Chevalier Dion spent her last years bedridden in poverty until her death in 1810, aged 81. Now on to the queer stuff. Dion presented publicly as a man until she was 49, after which she presented as a woman. She had already made an impressive mark on society before transitioning in 1777, but Dion's identity as a woman brought her even greater fame and celebrity status. In England, she mingled with the rich and the famous and performed popular demonstrations as a master fencer, often while wearing a striking black gown blinged out with her military medals. So high fashion. Perhaps not surprisingly, her transition inspired an ongoing widespread bet about her gender. So people being weirdly and rudely obsessed with other people's identities has an unfortunately long-standing history. According to some historians, Dion would challenge anyone who would bet on her gender identity to a duel. We should definitely keep this tradition alive. In 1770, a rumor started that Dion had actually been assigned female at birth, but she had been brought up as a man in order to receive a family inheritance. Although after her death, a surgeon claimed Dion's biological sex was male, but in Dion's unpublished autobiography, she herself claimed to have been born female, but was instead raised as a man by, as she put it, a father desperate for a son. So how did Dion transition during a time when it seemed like people were executed for just thinking queer thoughts? Well, at the time, there were women who, just like Mulan, dressed up like men to join the army. So Dion, being a military man who later revealed herself to be a woman, was not as unusual as you might think, and her transition was generally accepted. Besides now being a famous fencer, Dion was also held in high regard by innovative feminists of the time, as a specimen of shining female fortitude to which English women might look up to. One of these feminist philosophers was Mary Wollstonecraft, a fascinating woman in her own right who was actually Mary Shelley's mother. Yes, that Mary Shelley, you know, the 20-year-old oh, author wow. of Frankenstein. In conclusion, Both during her life and for centuries after, the brilliant and the daring Chevalier Dion has sparked conversation and controversy. To some, she was a trickster and even a monster. To others, a fascinating celebrity full of talent and intrigue. We still see her influence across all kinds of popular culture today. In the anime series Le Chevalier Dion, 
as the subject of a Doctor Who audio drama, and even as a character you can duel in Assassin's Creed Unity. Dion is a hero of the LGBTQ plus community because she lived as her authentic self over 200 years ago, during a time period in which trans people were not understood. Also because she fenced in a dress and looked awesome doing it. Take that on Ida. Make sure to check out the next episode of Historical Icons Who Weren't Actually Straight right here.